Hey, I'm Jim from Spoon, and we are very excited about our reverb shop, which is going live. The Gibson 330 was Brit's main guitar around 2005, 2006. I don't know how many shows we played then, but probably a lot. I mean, it probably was used in the studio because he didn't have many guitars back then, so. Oh, the Synergy, yeah. So that was a keyboard we used on Everything Hits at Once, quarter note keys. Uh, you'll hear it again on the solo, doubles the Mellotron. Probably use it on a couple other things on Girls Can Tell, but that's the one. Starting Girls Can Tell on, yeah, we tended to like use more, more synths and pianos and reverbs and things. Yeah, so we're selling a pair of Vibes. We've used that on Cherry Bomb, that was the main one I remember that was on. It's like a warm muted piano, you know, that kind of feel to it. Piano's a little too aggressive, you know, piano is like a lot more full frequency, the vibes you can sort of carve out, and, you know. Um, but it's definitely a moodier instrument, I think, you know. Yeah, the Zvex distortion pedal um, is Brit's, um, and he used it on a few things, but I know he used it on the solo, the guitar solo for uh, Don't Make Me a Target. The Klon was his main overdrive for a long time. Uh, a lot of the sound of his guitars on a lot of the older records are based on the Klon, and live, too. I know that he's used it for a really, really long time. So the Electron machine drum that we're selling, um, that was Brits too, and he used that on a bunch of Divine Fitz tracks, including a track called Salt and Sea. So I had a Trident 24, and the mic pre's were not very good, so I had those two Neves, and used those on a lot of, uh, pretty much as the mic pre's for probably everything from Girls Can Tell up to ga 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 ga. And then I got this baby, so. The Roland TR-303 was mine, and I was doing a couple of dance records a long time ago, and I sort of went a little crazy with buying gear and keyboard gear and stuff like that. So I haven't used that too much, but it works and it sounds great. Yeah, the 949, yeah, we would use that on things like um, snare and tom dives. You know, you put it through and you can get that sort of pitch down uh, decay, you know, stuff like that. I've used it for like guitar solos and things, you know. Brit probably has owned maybe 10 of those or something in his, his career, but he did a lot of his demoing on those. And then we would also print to them later on and then throw those tracks into Pro Tools because it does have a, a really cool compression aspect to it that we couldn't get in Pro Tools at the time. And, you know, the sort the higher fidelity tape machines, they just don't compress and distort like those things. We were actually thinking about ripping those apart and creating like channels, because that would be a lot of his sound. Fives is an Austin company, so a lot of those are my live kits that I would play. Yeah, the Tama was my probably main touring kit through uh, early days, so before I was endorsed by CNC. So that was probably Telefono, uh, Soft Effects, um, up through Girls Can Tell probably. Well, that was just a few pieces of gear. Uh, we're selling a lot more. Um, we're excited for the shop to go up and uh, we hope you know all the gear finds a good home, so thank you.